Hey everyone, it's Hudson Henry here, and I couldn't be more excited to be doing another Perfect Inspiration with OM1 for you guys. And today I'm going to showcase how I created this image of the Milky Way with the foreground cracks of the Alvor Desert. Uh, this was from the trip with Mac Laskowski last fall that we've been doing in the field videos about for you guys. And I want to show how I created what is essentially a vertical panoramic merger of two images, one sort of keyed for the Milky Way and the other one for the foreground, uh, and then hand blended them in Perfect Layers 9.5. It's a little bit different process than I normally use for a panoramic merger, and, and I'm really excited to share it with you. Um, I'm also going to talk just a little bit about how I go about creating an intake preset in Lightroom. I touched on that during my last Perfect Inspiration video, and I had this raft of social media requests for how did I do that. So I'm going to go into a little bit more detail and show you how to create an intake preset that's really keyed to your camera and does just some of the basic underlying adjustments to the raw image that you're going to want on every file. And without further ado, I think I'm going to switch off the talking head and just get to having some fun. So I'm going to start off in the grid view of Lightroom in the library module with some images that I've culled down that I want to work with or that I've found interesting. And the very first image here is going to be what we talk about creating an intake preset with. I'm going to go on into the develop module here and have a bigger look at this. And this is the on one crew that we had out there in the Avord filming our video and, and creating some fun images. We've got myself and Matt, Rick and Susan, Andy, our videography guru, and Peter, a great guy at the on one crew. So you can see this, this raw file is already got a few adjustments without me ever touching it. This is straight how it came into Lightroom. I've got a little 10 clarity boost, a little vibrance boost. Uh, under lens corrections, I've chosen to enable profile corrections, which is just sort of getting rid of some known imperfection in different lenses. Lightroom knows how to just change a little distortion, get rid of some vignetting that's a known issue. Remove chromatic aberration, that's where you get sort of color fringing in, in high contrast areas and I always want that box checked, it's magic and you know, you're going to regret it if you miss it later in your editing process. And then under camera calibration, camera calibration, I generally like to use one of my Nikon sort of JPEG emulation presets here. Adobe Standard is a little bit flat for me in general, it's a little dull. I tend to prefer uh, my Nikon camera standard calibration preset. This is just sort of a starting point for your editing workflow. Uh, some images call for a bit more contrast and color saturation. Here this crushes the shadows a little bit too much for me in these these high contrast to begin with images. But you know, there's some different ways you can play around. One thing I really like with the new Nikon cameras is camera flat, uh, which, which gives me a better idea of how much shadow detail there actually is in my image. And I tend to, to leave this setting on in my camera so that the images, the little JPEG it creates to display on my screen gives me a better representation of my RAW file when I'm shooting in the field. But again, you're creating a RAW file and uh, now you're just choosing a starting point for your edit. So in this case, I kind of like camera standard. Well now, how did I set this up so that all these little settings came in right when I import my files without doing any work? And it's, it's actually pretty simple. I, I bring in a RAW file, I make those quick little tweaks, then I go over to my preset, panel on the left side of the of the develop module and I'm going to click plus. You can see I've got a bunch of different preset folders I've created and I want to check none here, make sure that there's nothing locked into this preset that I don't want, but I'm going to choose camera calibration. That's our that's our Nikon standard camera standard setting that we did. I want chromatic aberration. I want lens profile corrections. I want clarity and I want vibrance. Those are the settings that I want added to every single image. And I'm just going to name this something like D810 standard to name it after that, that calibration version because I, I tend to have a few different ones that I like for my D810 depending on the type of shoot that I'm doing. And I'm going to put that in my intake preset folder. I could choose a different folder or I could create a new folder. In this case, I already have an intake presets folder. So I'm just going to go ahead and click create. It says a name, a preset with this name already exists. Not a big surprise because I already have created one. And then what you do, if we go back into the library module, say you want to bring in a whole bunch more images. I'm going to 
choose import here and I don't have a thumb drive attached so I'm just going to click on a folder here in my Drobo that already has its files imported just to show you the dialog and right here on the right panel of the import dialog you see apply during import under develop settings we're just going to go in here we're going to go down to our intake presets panel and we're going to choose one of these you can create different ones for your same camera you can create multiple intake presets for different cameras that you use and when you click on that it's just going to apply those settings that we locked into that preset to every image as they're brought into Lightroom so you don't have to worry about remembering to click correct chromatic aberration so there you go that's creating an intake preset and using it. So let's get back to the Alvord. This is that trip where we started off in the Painted Hills. This is a panoramic of the Painted Hills one evening. And then the next day we got out onto the playa and it was a really beautiful, uh, kind of dramatic, cloudy day in the Alvord Desert. You've got the Steens Mountains sort of forming there in the background. It was Matt's first time out there and, and he was really just blown away by the vastness of the place. And we went out, set out searching for interesting cracks and found a nice place to set up camp near some really interesting uh, cracked earth. You know, it's just so dry out there that the old lake bed shrivels up and forms these awesome patterns. And we had a really nice sunset with some interesting clouds. The desert's just so gorgeous with, with clouds like this. And the afterglow, after the sun went down, was really, really nice. And I was so glad that we were in a spot with so many interesting cracks to kind of set it off for foregrounds. Really nice afterglow that night. So we went to bed after spending some time around the fire. Got up the next morning to a crystal clear... A uh, little bit boring sky, but you know, as Matt always says, you just you just shoot these things for a couple of minutes. You wait for that sun star to rise, shoot the sun star for a minute, and then turn your attention to kind of the interesting shades and textures that that first light throws across the landscape. And then you're basically done on a clear bluebird day like this. There's not much more interesting light in a wide open landscape like this. To, to shoot so what do you do you rig up a GoPro and drive around shooting some video of what the place looks like uh, you, you do crazy jumping photographs with fun shadows and you even record the sound of silence which as any sound engineer will tell you is not so easy to find in the modern world and as a photographer of course you use the middle of the day to look for your your composition for that night's work for sunset work now in this case we knew we were going to have a perfectly clear sky and no moon so i was actually looking for a foreground for a star photo for a milky way photo i was really excited about the prospect of being far away from noise pollution and in this really kind of wide open interesting space to do something with the milky way and i've been thinking for a long time about doing a panoramic merger of an interesting foreground and the Milky Way, a big vertical one, you know, think about a, a long space alongside a door in a, in a home or a big, you know, tall section of wall, something that goes from right in front of the camera on the ground up into the top of the Milky Way's arch through space. And so I set up, I found these really interesting cracks. I, I took a foreground exposure of them just before it, the last light left the foreground. I, I sort of captured the last little afterglow after the sunset, and I underexposed it a little bit, it, knowing that I was gonna, gonna use it to blend with a dark image. Then I waited, we sat around the campfire, we had some fun, we told stories, we ate, and I came back to the camera, tilted it up, and shot the Milky Way as it, as it rolled into view across the scene. I had to wait a few hours until it got into the right position above the same hills. And I just essentially tilted the camera up, turned my ISO up to 1600, um, left the camera pretty wide open at about f4 and did a 20 second exposure of the Milky Way here. Now you can see my foreground image was again at 14 millimeters, but back down at f8 to get a little bit more uh, depth of field. And I shot it at 400 ISO, you know, it's getting dark, but 400 ISO, the D810 sensor is very clean, so I'm not going to have a lot of noise in these shadows. As you can see, if I zoom in, it's pretty darn crystal clear, sharp, and noiseless. If you look at the foreground in the shadows at 1600, you know, once I've corrected for the stars, there's quite a bit of noise in this foreground. 
just by virtue of the foreground being so underexposed. But you can see up here in the important part of this image in the Milky Way, this is a straight RAW file, the noise looks entirely correctable. And of course I've focused out at infinity to, to create this later image of the Milky Way so that the stars are, are more pinpoint in focus. Now this is a, another version of the foreground image that I've done some Lightroom editing. And let's go into the develop module and I'll show you how I adjusted this raw file. I like to do my raw adjustments, uh, the, those just sort of initial development adjustments in Lightroom and then finish my images in on one. And in this case, because I'm going to be working with two images, I'm going to finish both of those images in on one perfect effects and then I'm going to blend them in on one's perfect layers and I'm going to show you how we do that. But first let's take a look at the, the Lightroom adjustments that I did. I, uh, I, I warmed the image up just a little bit and took a little bit of magenta that, that I thought was off and the camera's choice of this, this longer exposure. Um, I've added just a little bit of exposure and contrast. I've played with my highlights, shadows, white point, black point. Um, boosted clarity a little bit more, pulled the vibrance back a little bit. I just wanted a little less color in this scene. Um, and here in detail, I've done quite a bit of work. That's the only other real spot. Uh, you can see I've done a bit of noise reduction, quite a bit of sharpening. Um, and, and if you go in here and have a close look at the, the finished image, it's taken it a minute to render. You can always, after you work in detail, I like to turn it on and off and make sure that what I've done has added to it. And you can see I've gotten rid of some color noise, some luminance noise, and just added a bit of sharpness to this image with the work that I've done in here. And, you know, if you're just going to be displaying, displaying an image online or on your computer screen, probably not such a big deal. But if you like to make big prints, which I do, one of the huge drives for me doing all these panoramics and multiple image mergers, is that I just love to see things big on the wall. This stuff gets really critical, those fine little details when you're pushing things to their maximum sizes. So, you know, I've shown you guys sharpening in the last episode, the last Perfect Inspiration episode. It's, it's kind of a complex little thing. Look for the other Alvord Perfect Inspiration, and you can see a little bit of my sharpening workflow. It's no different here than it is in a standard image. Oh, one other thing that I did to this image that is, is pretty obvious, actually, is I went up here into the graduated neutral density filter in, in the Lightroom basic adjustments, and I, I dropped one in here that really lowered the exposure right on the line of the mountains, because I know that in my image of the stars, the Steens Mountains are going to be black. They're, they're, there's not going to be any detail at all in those. And in my original image, there's, there's some detail in there. And I want to really crush those shadows right on that line right there so that I can easily blend at that point these two images. I know I'm going to be blending them by hand in those mountains. I've been sort of thinking about the way these two images are going to line up from the moment that I created the images in the field, actually. And you can see I've essentially lowered my exposure, boosted contrast, dropped the highlights and, and color saturation, clarity a little bit, and just, just crushed these shadows with a short transition zone using, on, uh, using Lightroom's graduated neutral density filter. So here you have the Lightroom basic raw adjustments. These are just sort of how I want that raw file developed to go in and finish the edit in Perfect Effects. And, and here's my Perfect Effects 9.5 edit of that image. You can see it just pops. It's just got a little bit more punch and pizzazz and contrast. And I'm going to go ahead and right click the image or control click uh, for the Mac and say edit in Perfect Effects 9 suite. And that's going to reopen. I'm going to use the original this smart photo. I've saved it as a smart photo in the Perfect Photo Suite and that's going to let me show you each and every move that I made and of course I could go back and redo it. For those of you that are still working in Suite 6, 7, 8, this is not an option and it alone is reason to really strongly consider upgrading to 9. Um, it lets you go back and change things if you feel like I, we've all gone to bed, woken up the next morning and looked at our image and said, whoa, what was I thinking in the middle of the night? I was clearly editing too long. Well, this lets you run back in, see every layer, every mask that you put on the image and re-edit it. Um, so here was our image coming in from Lightroom with just those basic raw adjustments. I added some dynamic contrast and I started with, with the landscape preset over here. You can run into your filters and 
and I chose a natural preset for dynamic contrast, but then I boosted the, sh the small details just a little bit. Uh, and I found there was still a little bit of noise when I zoomed into 100%. There was a little bit more noise I wanted to get rid of, and I felt that dynamic contrast had sort of accentuated it a bit. So I ran into On One's handy noise reduction here and chose Subtle. Uh, and I felt like maybe I was losing a little bit of detail, so when I zoomed it into 100%, which you can always just click this button here. It's going to take it a minute to render this big 36 megapixel file. But I, I chose to, to back that off just a little bit. I felt like I was losing a little detail. Noise reduction is always kind of a, a game between losing detail and, and, and losing noise. So you have, to, you have to ride that balance beam. And I found that right about there was, was the way that I liked it best. And then I clicked Apply. Here I'm just going to hit Cancel so that we can run back into Lightroom and, uh, and, and not change this already edited image. And, and here we have my image of the stars that, I've, that I worked on in Lightroom. And geez, you know, Lightroom has been doing this to me lately. For some reason, long exposure star images, really dark images, I'm not getting a clear display in the fit view of what my image looks like. This is how I edited it. Here we've gone into a, a one to four view, and you can actually see how it looks with my my same sort of basic adjustments in Lightroom. Once again, I've gone through and done essentially the same thing, but I've done it specifically for the stars, ignoring this whole foreground and, and my effects on the foreground. I don't care about noise in here because I know that I'm going to replace that with the foreground from my foreground image when I hand blend these in, in perfect layers. So let's go ahead and take a look at the image. I'm going to go back to the fit view. And we're going to see this, this weird little bug that I've got with Lightroom right now. I'm going to go back in here and take a look at my perfect effects edited version. You can see that it's really popped the Milky Way and, and darkened space a little bit. I'm going to show you what filters I use to do that. Let's, let's open up that smart photo in uh, perfect effects one more time. So we're going to run into the suite. I'm going to edit the original so that we can see all the moves that we made on that file. And here we are. Uh, this is our this is the view of the smart photo with all the layers and masks that I've done. Uh, and I'm going to just go back to the original Lightroom raw you know adjustments. Here we go. The first thing I add, same thing, always basically for landscape images is dynamic contrast. I can either grab it over here or I can get it in my closing up the blending options here. My filter options, you've got all these same options that you have in the filters panel. Uh, and then the presets, once you're in dynamic contrast, you can grab them right here. Also right here, you can have thumbnails of what they'll look like. I'm just going to work with them over here for right now. Uh, but essentially, you know, I generally choose the natural setting and then I play with my detail sliders until I get the look that I like. Then a little trick that I like to use for Milky Way images is the sunshine filter, which you can find over here or right in here. So I added another um, filter layer by, by hitting on the filter stack, a plus button right here. And the sunshine filter, I think I started with, let's see, uh, radiance. Radiance is one of my favorites. Radiance or just the flat sunshine have a real similar effect on Milky Way images. They darken the black of space uh, and, and generally create a little bit of pop to the cloud of the Milky Way, to all that cloud of stars. And you can see it did a couple things I wasn't so happy about up in here. I think it actually over darkened it. It made it look a little too inky black for me. And so I grabbed my uh, my masking brush and using my Wacom tablet, anytime I'm brushing in any app, whether it's Photoshop or Perfect Photo Suite 9.5 or Lightroom, I always really like to use a pressure sensitive tablet. And you can see right here, I'm, I'm painting with uh, about two-thirds opacity and I have my Wacom tablet toggle right here set for pressure sensitivity so if I just barely brush this it's gonna apply a very very light opacity brush if I press down hard it's gonna go right up to 68 percent you can set this at hundred percent and just feather your effect in by lightly lightly holding your pen on your Wacom tablet and uh, last time when I did my perfect inspiration I talked a little bit about about my love for the Wacom tablets and I had a lot of people asking me which model I use uh, my favorite right now the one that I'm using is a medium Intuos Pro but when I'm out in the field I'm actually so addicted to it I have a little 
dinky one that I take with me to work with my laptop too that fits right in my laptop bag. I have the small version. So that's my travel companion. So then the next filter, sometimes when you have a really dark sky, we, we had a little bit of noise pollution. It wasn't a perfect Milky Way setup. Uh, sometimes when you have a really dark sky, a really luminescent Milky Way, that sunshine filter is all you need. Those Olympic photos that I did a while back last summer out on the beach, the, the Milky Way was so bright and shining, it, it gave me all the punch I wanted just using the shun, sunshine filter. But for this one, I added a little bit more boost by, by grabbing the HDR look um, filter. And with the HDR look, I always start with natural. I don't really like to grunge it up too much. I want it to look real and natural. And so I start with natural, and the main player here is this compression slider. You're just gonna gonna play around with that slider, and it and it has a huge effect. You pull it over to the right, you pull it back to the left. You know, some people like this this really intense look. Um, I I prefer you know right in where where I was. In this case, 70. I just like to play with it to get the look that I want. And again, I didn't like what it was doing to the foreground, so I grabbed my adjustment brush and just painted it out of the parts of the scene that I wasn't happy with. Uh, and then the final thing was I'm just not really happy with some of the color that I'm seeing at the base of the Milky Way and along the horizon. So I played with, with an adjustment brush, and in Perfect Effects 9.5, the adjustment brushes essentially apply an effect to the image and then completely mask them off. So in this case, this mask was completely black when I started, and it sets your brush automatically to paint in. So it's sort of the opposite of painting an effect out after applying it. You, you apply a, a, an effect to your image, it's completely masked away, and then you just paint it into the parts that you want. And in this case, I, I chose Vibrance, but the natural setting of vibrance is to increase color, to increase vibrance. And what I did with this adjustment brush was just grab that slider and pull it down. So now I'm into kind of a custom filter preset um, and reducing vibrance. And I just painted it, that effect, into the image where I wanted. And I just kind of reduced the color. And you can see it, it had a nice little effect. So that's pretty much getting the image right to where I wanted it in Perfect Effects 9.5. You can see here was the straight up Adobe Lightroom raw edit. It's a great Milky Way image, but you can just add this pop and pizzazz really simply, just throwing on some filters, masking, playing around with it a little bit. I'm gonna hit cancel once again to get back into Lightroom. And the next and final step really is to grab these two images, my two adjusted Photoshop documents that I've worked on in Perfect Photo Suite 9.5 and Perfect Effects. And I'm going to run up here and go into my plugin extras and choose Open as Layers and Perfect Layers 9, and we're gonna blend them together. Really exciting. And here we are in Perfect Layers 9.5. You can see that both of these edited images have been opened as layers in this single document here. And I need to increase the canvas size in order to sort of blend these two as a vertical panoramic. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to run up into the menu here and choose Edit, and I'm going to adjust the canvas size. And I don't want to lock proportions. I only want to increase the height proportion. So I'm going to uncheck that. And I like to work with pixels a little bit better than inches here. I don't think I need to double this canvas because there's some overlap. I'm not going to go all the way up to, say, 15,000 pixels. Again, these are huge files. These are D810 uh, 36 megapixel files. I'm going to uh, instead choose, I'm, I'm thinking about 11,000 pixels will probably give me the space that I need to, uh, to move these. And there we go. I'm going to grab the transform tool now. And in a real simple way to, to move this vertically upwards, you can grab it with your transform tool and just drag it upwards. But to keep it perfectly straight as I'm moving up, I can just hold my up arrow on the keyboard. It's a little slow, but it's really precise and it keeps everything sort of in bounds, so to speak. And then in order to sort of see what I'm doing, as I click to this next image, it's going to ask whether I want to apply or not. On the, when I click on the other layer, I do want to apply the transformation that I just that I just did. But I want to go back in here to this layer, and I want to reduce its opacity just enough to sort of see through and see both images at the same time. I'm making it just a touch translucent. 
Uh, and then I'm going to grab the lower layer. I'm going to drag it down. I'm going to line these mountains up. And, and I know I'm going to do exactly the same way. I could grab and drag, but instead I'm going to just use the keyboard. I know that because the, the layer that's on top of the Milky Way, those mountains are at the very bottom edge of a 14 millimeter lens, and this other one there at the middle, they're not going to line up perfect. There's some distortion going on here. So I'm just going to basically drop it to where the mountains in the foreground image are blending into the mountains in the, in the upper image. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that's fine. I'm going to go back up here and turn my layer opacity back up, which is going to require me to, to apply that transformation to the, to the lower layer. I'm going to turn the opacity back up. And then all that's really left for me here is to grab my masking brush once again. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave my, oh, I'm gonna reduce my opacity a little bit. I want to blend this in, uh, and once again, I'm gonna be using my my Wacom tablet and pen, and I'm gonna use the pressure sensitivity for opacity, and I'm just gonna start painting this foreground image out. And I can go ahead and zoom in here so that I can really see what I'm doing. Maybe that's a little too much. I'll come back just a touch. I can hit the tab key on my keyboard to get rid of the panels and have a little bit bigger view. And then using my, my on the tablet little, little dial here, I can turn my brush size down without even reaching away from the tablet and just softly kind of brush my foreground, which is on the lower layer. I'm actually brushing away the foreground of the Milky Way layer and blending it into the foreground of the background layer. And there you have it. If I go back, I'm gonna hit my tab key to get my panels back, go back to my fit view, and we're pretty close right there. And I can either go in here and crop it here or crop it in Lightroom. I'm gonna go ahead and just close this. I'm gonna not save it and jump us back into Lightroom so you can see the finished image. And there you go. It's exactly what I was looking for. I could not be more pleased with this image. I'm working on finishing up a 1200 square foot brand new printing space with a big Epson 44 inch printer ready to install in about a week and a half. And this is going to be one of the very first images that I print. So I'm going to turn the lights back on here in Lightroom and have a look at uh, a couple other little things. This is another image that I, that I worked on that night. I used a very similar process kind of, process the foreground one way, the background another, but you can just see it's it's not as crystal clear as having the foresight to shoot your foreground with underexposed with a bit of light. Um, it just just that having lower ISO, a little bit, a little bit uh, more depth of field with it with a higher aperture and that brighter light lets you really, really get a crystal clear, interesting foreground to blend into your to your Milky Way shot. So you know, this was this was a fun experiment that I'm just really happy with how it turned out. And the next morning, Matt and I got up and we had explored kind of an area to go to that had these really interesting sort of puffy, cracked surface. Uh, and once again, we we caught the the starburst. There was no interesting cloud. We didn't have an epic sunrise, but this was kind of fun. And then I, I got this image with those really interesting cracks as the first light hit Steen's Mountain, and uh, that one I just love. It was, it was such an interesting image and um, a little bit of dynamic contrast in Perfect Effects 9.5 really really did the trick on that. So that's about it uh, for this particular Alvord Desert. Uh, trip, but the next set of videos, uh, both the Perfect Inspirations and In the Field, are going to be up in the Steens Mountain and then hitting Heart Mountain Antelope Sanctuary on the way home, which both are really, really fun images. Matt and I had a really crazy windy dawn up on the top of Steens Mountain where it felt like it was going to blow us off this 2,000 foot cliff. Uh, it was just a really, really epic last couple of days of the trip. Look forward to that stuff coming in the near future. Uh, some perfect inspirations on on a big panoramic I did of the whole Steens Mountain um, from from you know it's kind of a kind of a otherworldly view up there that there's no other way to capture it but a big wide angle panoramic. Um, and again, if you guys have questions about anything you've seen in these videos, feel free to hit me up. I'm always excited to to hear what your experience with editing, with shooting, with 
anything in the photographic process. I just love helping people improve their photography, whether it's in the field or editing. Uh, I'm working on a series of workshops that are going to be slated for the end of the year, beginning of next year, maybe some for the fall, so kind of keep an eye out for that. There's a sign up for a newsletter on my blog. I'd love to see you guys sign up for that. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, I'm really active on. And it's probably best if you ask me questions there. Uh, if, you, if you go directly to the YouTube site and ask me questions, I'm not monitoring that on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm more likely to catch your questions on my social media, uh, particularly Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, thanks so much, everybody. Had a great time. Can't wait to see you next time.